Hello, Roger Cuthbert here. Welcome to the Houston District Photographic Society's In Isolation competition. It's week five. The theme of this week is fluff, fur and feathers. We've had four rounds so far and a different winning photographer each time, as you can see from the table on your screen now. Let's see what happens after this round. Our guest judge this week is another of our members, Tori Andrews, LRPS, DPAGB, BPE Star 3. Tori is a keen for traveller and predominantly a wildlife photographer. Tori's comments are being read on our live broadcast this week by Maud May Cuthbert. Amorous Cuckoos. A great behavioural shot captured here and there is good detail in the cuckoos. It's a little noisy, but it's definitely a shot worth recording. I would have cropped off the right hand side a little to omit the edge of the branch. The backdrop is a little untidy, but you can't pick where these moments happen, can you? Artie Lady. I'm amazed at what you have at home to shoot for these themes. Vibrant colours with some great textures in the materials used. The leaf close to the face is a little distracting and I'd have liked the face to have had a little more room to look into. Bijou Accommodation This looks like a very cosy nest with all that white fluff. Well spotted. Maybe a little processing to omit the bright spot at the top could have helped, but an interesting image of this bird's handiwork. Blue tit. This is a lovely image. I don't even mind that it's on a feeder. It's sharp and shows off the blue tit nicely. It's placed well on the right third and I appreciate the diffused, clean backdrop. It would have benefited from some noise control and a lift in exposure from the top right. The graduated filter in Lightroom is brilliant for this kind of thing. Brush-tailed possum. This is a very interesting looking animal. It looks like it was shot after dark, so getting a usable image is really difficult and you have managed it here. It looks a little oversaturated and we are losing a bit of detail due to the lack of light, but it's a very good record. Caught. I like this image very much. Dried flower heads make good subjects. These have some lovely texture and the composition works well. Do we need the bark tree trunk in the background? Probably not, I think. It may have suited a mono edit too. I'd maybe tidy up the couple of stray ends on the left, just so everything is tucked into the frame nicely. Great image. Displaying. I can see why you called this image displaying. It certainly is just like a bird displaying its feathers. Another really creative image with great use of color. A couple of things distract a little. The vase appears to be floating. Adding a horizontal sweep of a lower exposure could have created a shadow to give it some grounding. Vases nearly always pick up reflections that in my opinion take away from the image. I can see your window in the reflection. Maybe this was intended, but I don't think it adds anything. When you shoot, raise your exposure slightly. And if you hold up a large piece of mount board to block unwanted reflections, you can avoid this. Dreamcatcher. A sharp and well taken image of some very pretty feathers. I would possibly crop the top and bottom to come in a little closer. You could have lost the grain on the backdrop a little bit more by bringing your dream catcher further away from backdrop. Eagle Owl. A beautiful bird indeed. His eye is super sharp along with his talons. A slightly bigger f-stop would have given you a little more depth of field to get the rest of his body and tail in focus. Maybe this was a payoff to emit an untidy backdrop? I can see there are some distracting blue things there. Maybe getting down a little lower could have removed those? Overall it's a little too tightly cropped for me on the head and tail and I'd have raised the exposure slightly on the bird. Face mask must always be worn. Or oh, it's a pandemic. Very clever and topical for the situation we are in right now. He is very sweet. 
apologies. I just want to hear Roger, Maud May, do all the bad jokes. Your white balance looks a little cold and maybe tidy up the distractions in the foreground. Fantasy trip. Another creative image with great use of colour. I'm not sure about the lines on the backdrop as this resembles what happens when images start to break down, but it certainly does feel trippy as your title su suggests. I like the treatment and colours that the feathers have been given, though the vase and hippo appear to be floating with no grounding. Feather planter. A simple study of a single feather in mono, which works well against the tree stump. They are a good combination accompanied by good use of light. I feel the feather does compete with the grasses a bit, which is a shame. Feathers flying. I smiled when I saw this image, incredibly creative, and I love that these birds don't give two hoots about social distancing. Great colours and good handling of the whites. Feathers on the patio. A handsome bird caught well in mid-stride. His body is captured really well, showing his iridescent plumage. It's a shame we don't see all of his tail, but this doesn't worry me too much. I would have removed the white flower by his chest and the stalk under his beak for this fun competition. Of course, we're not allowed to do that in most nature competitions. Fern mimics horse. A very pretty study of this fern and feather. I can see the resemblance to a horse too, well spotted. The light is lovely on the feather, but a little harsh on the lower right part of the fern. Contrasting light is very difficult. It feels a little tightly cropped on the right hand side. Flock of feathers. Mallards are great to photograph, very comical and great colours are seen on the bird to the right. Sadly, you have missed your focus, which is more on the pots in the backdrop than your subject. Give them a little whistle next time and they might turn around for you too. Flying furball. Wow, this little dog really is flying. A great capture caught mid-air. These sorts of shots are not easy and they work better if you can be down lower to create more of a diffused backdrop. I wouldn't have fancied getting down any lower either. It looks a bit wet. Try raising the exposure a little bit more of a crop to add to the impact. Fur or feather? I have to guess, do I? I think it's a bird with very compact feathers on its chest. So feathers, I think. It's great that it could be either. The sweep and direction of the feathers is great. It'd make a good puzzle. I'm guessing it's quite a big crop as you've lost a bit of detail towards the lower half of the image with some noise creeping in. Golden mantled ground squirrel. What a sweet little face this animal has. I like the, the composition very much and the softness surrounding its face. Sadly, there is such a shallow depth of field that the eye and face aren't sharp. When you show animals, the eye really needs to be your focal point. Great spotted woodpecker. A lovely bird with beautiful markings. Is it a big crop? It's quite out of focus. A great spot though. Green finch. I love to see green finches. There are now so few after they suffered a horrible disease a few years ago. This one looks in great health, which is good to see. Sharp and a good natural catch light in the eye, which makes him come to life. On a feeder, but it's been well handled and diffused into the backdrop. A good record of a great bird. Growing up fast. The magic number three. It works well. Is that mum in the background? She looks totally at ease with you checking out her babies who seem very interested in you, which has given you some great eye contact with them. I don't think the vignette was needed or it's a little too heavy. Watch your highlights on the pale fur though. I'll have a curl and set. What a lovely kind face this horse has. 
Horses' eyes are so expressive, I think, and you have captured a bit of personality here, which is great. It's a little tightly cropped and there are some darks that could be lifted a little. Otherwise, it's a nice portrait of this animal. Look out. And that is certainly what this cat is doing. It's a lovely portrait. It's no secret that I'm a cat lover, but that means I scrutinise cat images even more than usual. This one is very good, I think. It's super sharp where it needs to be, a nice diffused backdrop, and you have even have a perfectly colour match wall to show off your feline. The vignette is a little heavy. You can still draw the eye in with a very subtle vignette. Lovely portrait. Moorhen chick. The chick only a mother could love is what they say about moorhens, poor things. They are quite ungainly when they are tiny, with huge feet and soggy feathers. You have captured just that. The surroundings are a little distracting, but your subject is well exposed. Owl and feathers. Another creative image of a tawny owl with a feather. The feather is beautifully shot, good, light and nice and sharp. I also like the addition of the falling feathers at the bottom. I'm struggling a bit with the owl, which I can't quite make out its right wing or legs. It looks a little strange. The feather on its own would have worked better, I think. Raccoon skin bag. Yikes, that looks like it might jump up and raid the bins at any minute. I'd only have guessed it was a raccoon by its tail. Certainly an unusual item to own, and the wooden backdrop seems appropriate for this bag. Reflection. A lovely study of this feather, showing fluff and feathers in one image. I'm going to stick my neck out here and say that I think this reflection was created in post-processing. The reason I say that is that there is no actual line where the image meets the reflection and the feather overlaps its reflection on the right hand side. Just me being picky. It's very pretty. I'd raise the exposure just a little. Swan in spring sunshine. What a beautiful shape this swan is creating. The best wildlife images take patience, waiting for an animal or bird to do something a bit different so you can get the perfect shot. I like that we can still see the bird's eye and the reflection is lovely on what looks like still water. The highlights are a little bright on the right hand side and make sure that your shadows are not blue. The Cake Thieves. House sparrows are great to photograph. They are feisty little birds and they will come very close given the opportunity of cake. The perfect three again here, well exposed and sharp on our main two birds. They look like they're having a great time. Three feathers. The positioning of the feathers here is perfect and I like the bend created in them too. The high key is a good choice, but we are losing some of the softer parts of the feathers at the bottom. What brushing your cat might reveal? Very cleverly done here with door mice and harvest mice. I don't think they would have lasted long in my cat's fur. They would have been a snack. I like the positions of the mice, very cute. Okay, so that was our last image. So let's take a look at all 32. Here's the selection of all 32 images, not in any particular order. Tori picked four as her favorites, which were... Feathers Flying, Look Out, The Cake Thieves and Caught. And then Tori's favourite of those four as her winning image. Feathers Flying. By Rosie Carpenter. Well done, Rosie. So many thanks to everyone who entered, as always. A really creative image uh, which made Tori uh, instantly smile. It has instant impact and it's a fun image. And she says, very well done. Well, there we are. Well done to Rosie for winning this week, and our thanks to Tori for judging. 
Once again, my thanks to Maud May for the voiceovers, which meant you didn't have to listen to me again. Thank you, everyone, and keep safe. <laughs>